Oh damn, look what I got. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to SpeedyBee for sending this to me and trusting me to do a review for their newest stack. It's the V4 version of their F405 55A stack. Like, how did they even know about my channel? Well, oh, can't refund this anymore. Got a little support card here. Holy <laughs> Look at this, the gummies are already installed. Like, that's amazing. You know, most FCs, you gotta put it in yourself. The next thing I noticed about this board is this cutout. If you have a really tight build, your FPV camera can get closer now and it provides more clearance. So flipping it over, I never had an FC with a micro SD slot. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, usually the black box is built in, but having it this way, you could log a lot of black box data. So there's also a DJI plug and play port right here. I like to move my DJI O3 air unit from quad to quad to save money. The air units are pretty expensive these days. So this is a must have. I love the look of machined aluminum. This is sick. This ESC feels very premium. It's got a little bit of weight to it, but it feels very durable. You could just see right here, it could take 55A, three to six S LiPos, and it's got this huge honking heat sink on it. You could probably throw some power hungry motors on this and it's gonna do fine. So perfect for your beast build. So the ESC is 23.62 grams. So the FC is 11.07 grams and them together, 34.62 grams. What else is in this box here? A little pull tab, and looks like we got a bunch of cables. So this is for the old DJI Air unit. This is the connection from the FC to the ESC. So if you have it just like this, you can use the short wire and just plug both in. For clearance issues or something, you might have to install it into your frame like this and like this, right? But you know, you see the shorter wire doesn't work it's not long enough, right? So they included a longer one too. You know, they're really thinking of the user experience. They got an XT60 here and it's got 12 AWG. That's a nice fat wire for juicy power. Really nice and, and heavy duty. They got some nuts and extra gummy. Uh, they got stack screws. There's also a 1000 UF 35V capacitor in here. What, no sticker? Come on guys. No, I'm just kidding. It's time to geek out. Let's talk about the technical details. It's a 30 by 30 mounting config, so make sure your frame has those holes. It's pretty much the top of its class and the best value of its class. Look how cheap it is. If you wanna look at the specifications and versus the competition or versus the old board, I have all that information in the description below. So the MCU that's used is a STM32 F405 and the gyro is using a ICM426 88p. So the gyro is protected by something called an LDO power chip. So what that does is give the gyro dedicated power and it enhances surge protection by almost 320%. Like that's amazing. And not only that, it also has a 100 UF filtering tantalum capacitor and that also shields gyro data from power interference. So if you combine that with the included 1000 UF capacitor installed on the battery leads, that should guarantee you precise flight performance that you expect from the flight controller. I'm really excited about the surge protection because I've shorted way too many FCs already just by simply crashing, possibly something shorting or sometimes prop strike on an XT60. Maybe I shouldn't be waving this metal object around this, huh? But you know, it's not plugged in. Mm. So this FC also features a battery checker. If all the lights on, that means the battery's still at 100%. And if it's at half, I mean, so on and so on, right? 75%, 50%, 25%. So what I usually look for in a flight controller is a barometer and it's a must have because then you can activate it in beta flight and your OSD and it can tell you your altitude. So you can make sure you don't go over the legal ceiling and stay within the law. Cause without it, you'd never know how high you are. And on the back side, there's a micro SD card slot. So I was reading that the older versions of the Speedy Fleet, the Speedy, the Speedy Fleet, uh, the Speedy B flight controller, some micro SD cards didn't work, but Apparently this new V4 version, they made it work with most micro SD cards. The max that it will record in beta flight is four gigabytes, but that's still a massive amount of memory. This is a tuner's dream because you can spend more time tuning and flying, less time erasing. 
All right, so we have four UARTs on this board. So starting with UART 1, this is good for your VTX. And if you use the DJI plug, it would use up this area as well. If you use your own receiver, such as Crossfire or ELRS, then this is the zone for that. And you got UART 3 over here as well. And this is a good area to install your GPS. For my type of flying, this is more than enough. So if you like using LED arm lights, this is definitely the board for you. Each LED light on each arm directly into the corners, and it makes the wiring really clean. And if you want to add four more motors to your quad, you would just have to buy another ESC and connect it to here. And there's something I just want to point out with the quality of this board. I really like the bold white ink on this. Everything is so easy to read. All the zones are clearly divided by outlines and stuff like that. I can see that they're really trying to maximize the user experience and that's really important. PDB includes these stack screws, M3 by 30, but in my opinion, I think they're just a little too long. I'm just gonna use my own for now. Hot, 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 hot. So I'm gonna install my flight controller backwards because if I do it this way, it's gonna be blocked by the XT60. So I'm just gonna do it this way and it's just a quick setting in the beta flight to just... So first I'm gonna put in the long wire here. Drop it in, make sure it's nice and snug. It's finger tight all around and when you tighten it too much, the bottom of your board might start touching the frame. You're gonna have magic smoke. Since I'm using the O3 air unit, I'm just gonna plug and play. is I just plugged in the computer and the receiver is on so you can bind it without plugging in your lipo and apparently the GPS works the same as well so you plug it in through USB and you can warm up your GPS before your flight so you don't have to use your lipo. All right so I'm just flashing Blue Jay right now. I'm going to start with 24 PWM because you know 4896 is supposed to be more smooth but I think 24 will feel more torquey. So we'll quickly do ports. So since I'm using DJI, I'm just gonna turn this on for now. This is already on. This is where my crossfire is. UART4 is the Bluetooth. I'm just gonna leave that on. UART5, don't touch it, it's for the ESCs. And UART6 and UART3 is free right now. So usually UART6 would be your GPS. Uh, so you would turn it on by just going GPS here. And then this one is free for your accessories. See right now the CPU load is 24%. So I kind of worry about turning on bi-directional D-Shot on this. Um, so D-Shot 300, okay. Yep, I'm using a 2306, usually has 14 magnets. So I'm just gonna turn it on, agree. So I'm gonna save and reboot. Wow, so you see right away the CPU load gone to 43%. Usually like 30% is a good number. So this went over a little bit, but you know, I've run 70% before and it's no big deal. You know, I'm not running a lot of accessories and stuff like that. So it might be, I guess it's okay. Um, let's take a look at the tasks, make sure it's running at that speed. So it is running more than that speed. So yeah, it's, it's okay. This is great, just perfectly flyable. I, at least I can't tell. I mean, I'm not I'm not like super pilot. Okay, so now we're gonna try the Bluetooth feature, downloading the SpeedyB app. Thank you. So now we have the SpeedyB app connected through Bluetooth on the FC, which is really neat. I'm gonna change the motor direction just using the app by itself. This is my first time doing it. This, nope, that's PID tuning. Um, nope. Hey, where's the motor tab, guys? Okay, so we're at the motors tab. We gotta reorder the motors first because I, I turned the FC in a backwards. So, okay, let's do it. Say yes, my props are off, start. So that is number two. That is number four. Number one. That is number three. Save, okay. So after flying it, you know, definitely I could make some changes to the tune. Usually I would go in the black box, but 
I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is. So you could just go to your PID tuning and just start doing your thing and see the changes right on the field. In my opinion, I think this is the most modern and powerful cost-effective option at the moment, especially for someone building like either an LR rig, freestyle drone especially, or like an eight motor beast, apparently also fixed wings. As long as you don't mind the extra weight of the heat sink or using BL Heli S. Usually when I build a high-end rig, I'm always looking for 32-bit stacks just for its extra tunability in BL Heli 32. But these stacks usually come at a much higher price, possibly double. But you know, quite honestly, I used both types in the past on five inch freestyle drones and I'm probably not good enough to feel the difference. Flashing Blue Jay is still very good with RPM filtering. It still allows you to choose a variety of customizable options. As for reliability, I can't say much at the moment. I mean, I only put it through like a few flights with a dual gyro power supply filtering and protection, plus the heat sink, it does scream the promise of durability and longevity, especially during unintended power surges, but at the cost of some extra few grams. I think in the future, I think they can try to make the same stack, but a mini one, maybe even cut out one UART just for like the freestyle crowd. I think that would be awesome. You know, if we could shave like 10 grams off of it, and maybe it's just $10 more or something. I think I think that'd be a great option. You know, I'm very impressed so far. I'm fully on board with Speedy B Electronics. How about you? Are you planning your next powerful build? Go pick one up in my affiliate links if you want to help me out. I also put some other recommendations of their products below. I mean, some of their products do look pretty sick. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay.